Well, hello and welcome to another episode of MMT Ed Q&A. Thanks for joining us and thanks to all of those who keep submitting questions. We're trying to get to them as best we can. Now tonight, we continue our discussion with Dr. Pavlina Cheneva about the job guarantee. And she has a new book out at the moment. And I recommend you get hold of it to explore the wonderful world of job guarantee. Tonight we consider the issue of whether the job guarantee or an employment buffer stock is an intrinsic part of modern monetary theory or whether it can be considered dispensable to modern monetary theory. That's what we consider tonight. So here's a question, Pavlina, from Julius. And he wants to know what makes the job guarantee so important to MMT? What the resonance of that question is, he elaborated a bit further. And uh, this is a common problem that people have. And I've used this terminology that MMT is like a lens. It's a framework for understanding the way in which the monetary system operates and the capacities of the government as the currency issuer and the consequences of having your own currency or not in the case of Eurozone countries. To operationalise that into policy, you need to overlay some values or an ideology. And then people turn around and say to me, but yeah, but you're one of the advocates of job guarantee. Isn't that a policy? And I say to them, it's a bit more subtle than that. The job guarantee is intrinsic to MMT. And a lot of commentators who find MMT somewhat interesting uh, hate the job guarantee. Uh, they vary from calling it socialism or whichever country you're in or putting people off MMT. So how do you see the, that sort of tension? Why is the job guarantee central to MMT? I mean, the first thing to recognize is that in MMT, job, the job guarantee is not just another jobs program. Yeah. It's not just a job creation program. There have been many, many people propose job creation programs. The job guarantee actually is a macroeconomic condition. And so what we have is a currency issuing government that imposes tax obligations on the population in its own currency. That from inception creates a kind of unemployment, form of monetary unemployment, just by virtue of the existence of the non-reciprocal tax. This is not a value judgment. It is, it's a stylized fact. And you know, Keynes also talked about monetary unemployment. There are many aspects to the analysis of monetary unemployment. And MMT adds the component of that monetary phenomenon that originates from the state. And so if the state actually creates unemployment through this tax function, then the state is then responsible for resolving it if it so chooses. Of course, it doesn't choose to do so, but what is often neglected is that the state is responsible for unemployment anyway, nonetheless. That the state has to first do counter-cyclical stabilization for the business cycle. It has to deal with the fallout of unemployment. It provides the income support and needs to deal with the social costs of unemployment. It, it is inescapable. The unemployment problem that has been created through the monetary system in one way or another must be addressed. And it is being addressed in a very inferior way under the current model, which is a model of neglect, waste, destitution, and on and on. The job guarantee is this policy proposal that, well, first, it's the, the straightest distance between two points. If you've created unemployment, then you can remedy it by uh, providing jobs. That's straightforward and directly. We don't go through this enormous web of policies that are justified in the name of job creation, but they never create enough jobs for everybody. We just create them directly. The second thing is, again, from an MMT perspective, how you in inject the currency into the economy also matters, right? It's one thing for me to give a corporation a very large contract and say, okay, create some jobs. Well, we don't know how many jobs are going to be created. We don't know what the price of things will be, what yeah. the price of labor will be. But when we do it through a job creation, the very expenditure, a 
the contribution of the state of the, to the economy is done through this strict mechanism through the, through the wage and the number of people that are being employed. And so what we say is that the job guarantee is a better control, if you will, of the full employment budget, because we know exactly how much we need to spend in an anti-cyclical way. We can fix the price of labor, uh, we can employ a number of people, and we can secure a firm living wage floor. And then we don't really spend a dollar more beyond full employment from this program to secure that macroeconomic condition. In the current system, we don't really know how large a budget would be required to employ everyone. We don't know what those wages will be. And in fact, actually, we know <laughs> wages are poverty paying wages. We know that jobs are not created for all. We know that firms have all sorts of reasons to not employ everyone. And so that still remains the responsibility of the government sector. So I would say you're quite right. There are deep inherent macroeconomic reasons that cannot be escaped. The responsibility of the state cannot be escaped. And there are just simply a, a superior ways of dealing with, un with unemployment and the job guarantees one. Yeah, I think of it in terms of, you know, no economist disputes the, the, the idea that we should have an economy that's efficient. And at a macroeconomic level, what that means is that all resources are being used. It's totally inefficient to have mass unemployment. Often that's abstracted from by microeconomists who worry about whether your tra trains run on time or whether some utility is being provided at lowest cost, and they forget the massive the inefficiencies of mass unemployment. Whether you like it or not, there's only one way you can have efficiency with labour and that's full employment. In that sense, it's intrinsic to a, a framework in my view. Yeah. And maybe one other thing to add is, I think the guarantee is what gives people pause when they hear job guarantee that troubles them. But I think it escapes most people that guarantees are everywhere. The government uses its sovereign powers to offer at will guarantees in many aspects of life, right? I mean, we guarantee deposits. We guarantee, as you've shown, you know, we guarantee uh, certain commodity prices, right? We have buffer stocks to guarantee the price of a, of a commodity and its full employment level. We guarantee asset prices. I mean, we have no trouble intervening in oil markets, commodity markets, financial markets, provide loan guarantees. They are typical and they are widespread. Yes, maybe it is a value judgment that labor perhaps it should be deserving of those guarantees far more than gold or, or oil or wool. Yeah, I, I liked what you said earlier. In a capitalist monetary system, to have stabilization, you either have a buffer stock of unemployment or a buffer stock of jobs. There's no, no escaping that binary. And the way we do it now is we guarantee unemployment. For most disadvantaged workers, we guarantee unemployment at particular points in the business cycle. It's much better, in my view, to guarantee employment and you, of course. Okay, that's it for tonight. Thanks very much for joining us. We'll be back next week with more questions and hopefully some more interesting answers. In closing, I just want to thank all of those who have made donations to MMT Ed so far. We really appreciate that and thank you. MMT Ed relies on public donations to build our capacity and to get us in a position where we can offer courses free of charge to the general public. We hope to start floating courses in September of this year. So if you can help, we really appreciate it. Thank you. Until next week, see you later.